problem, we're dealing with the fixed asset transactions. The following is an equipment account and its associated accumulated depreciation amount. I have accumulated, I mean, I'm sorry, we have equipment for a beginning balance of 49000 and we have, we've added machine C for 25000 and we've reduced it by machine A and B. And then over here in accumulated depreciation, we can see related to machine A, machine B, um, a beginning balance and depreciation for the current year. And then we have this additional information. Machine A was sold at a gain of 900. Machine B was sold for its scrap value of 200. And machine C was acquired during the year. Analyze the two accounts and show in journal entry form the entries that would, have, that would be made in preparation of the statement of cash flows to reflect all of the changes listed in the accounts. If an amount does not require an entry, leave it blank. So we're starting with machine A. And it's a little bit strange because we're going to have it split between this investing and operating activities, but this whole chunk is really just one journal entry. So I'm going to make these um, bold, I guess, so that they stand out from our accounts. And so, so in this investing activities, we're going to show the proceeds from the sale of machine A. We're going to show the accumulated wowza, depreciation related to machine A. And we're also going to show the reduction of equipment being A. Not sure why this is bold and blue. Then and let's indent that. For our net cash flows from the operating activities, that's where we'll show the gain on the sale of machine A. Let's indent that. And so now we have our accounts that are going to be associated with machine A and we can fill in our debits and credits. So we know that equipment A had a um, balance or a worth of 8100 or that's what it was originally purchased for, is what I should say, of 8100 We were given that there was a gain of 900 We also know that accumulated depreciation was 6300 and so that allows us to determine that the proceeds from the sale must have been $900 greater than the book value, which would be the difference between the 8100 and the 6300 And so we get proceeds of 2700 Now for machine B, uh, we have it broken down between our investing and operating. I'm going to make those bold again. So we'll start out with our proceeds from the sale of machine B. We'll also have accumulated depreciation for machine B. And this time it was sold for a scrap value of 200 and over here we can see that the book value is currently 600 so we know we're going to have a loss of 400 and so down here we can put loss on sale of machine B and a credit to equipment for B as well And so the proceeds from the sale is just that 200 of scrap, the accumulated depreciation of 4,600. The loss on the sale we already calculated as 200 
but we'll just do it again here um, to reconfirm those numbers. So our 5200 minus 4600 gives us a book value. And then minus the 200 that we re the proceeds from the sale gives us a loss of 400. And I apologize, I put that in the wrong spot. And then our equipment needs to be credited for the 5200. Then finally for um, machine C, this is just a little, um, so we have our cash flows from investing activities, so that's the payment of the purchase, and let's make this bold. Like the other transactions. Payment for purchase of machine C. And that was twenty five thousand. And then classified under the operating activities we'll have the depreciation expense for the equipment, C. Twelve thousand. And then, oh, it, it made the C into copyright, but that's okay. Um, and then we'll have accumulated depreciation for equipment C for 12,000. And, oh, what we're missing here is a debit for $25,000 of us actually receiving the equipment. And so then we're back to balance because we have our 25000 for the equipment, showing the increase in equipment as well as the payment for the purchase, and then our 12000 for the depreciation expense and the accumulated depreciation.